Amber Heard was cross-examined on Monday, and not only was she crushed and it was a bloodbath, but it also really displayed how much she is a total narcissist. And I'm going to break it all down for you in this video. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I'm an attorney. I'm also a narcissist negotiation expert. And I was watching the cross-examination on Monday with really, really uh, quite an interesting eye because I've also done many different cross-examinations on clients before and or on, on people before and uh, opposing clients, I should say, in trials. And I was, I thought, first of all, that Camille did a fantastic job. Camille Vasquez, who was Johnny's attorney, Johnny Depp's attorney. And um, I thought it was really uh, fascinating how, uh, how she came across in a number of different ways. And I wanted to just break down a few of my, my thoughts and a few of the highlights, um, especially how I, I really kind of thought that she came across in her narcissistic way. So here are just a few of the highlights. But for one of the things, I did a, a video last week on my thoughts and my, my, my reactions to her direct examination. And you definitely want to check that out. In her cross-examination, she didn't even bother with the fake crying and the bad acting this time. She just dispensed with that this time. So one of the things that you want to do when you are going to do a cross-examination as an attorney is you, you don't want to ask questions that you're not pretty sure that you are going to know the answers to. So, uh, you know, Camille did a, a good job of that. Here's the thing. She came across, meaning Amber, as a person who really didn't have feelings. She certainly didn't come across as a domestic violence victim. I mean, she wasn't, again, with this body language, you know, and I mentioned this before, you know, here's a person who's coming across as defensive or tough or even um, strong. I, I mean, almost like she was ready for a fight, you know, no, yes. Mm, eh, eh. You know, I mean, she, she's like, almost like ready to come across the, the witness stand. I mean, this is not a person who's being questioned about, you know, being punched and beat up and, and, and like, reliving this. This is not a person who seemed like she was traumatized. I mean, if you're truly a domestic violence victim and you're being asked about these horrible events that took place, my nose was broken. I was beat up. I had all these, you know, bruises and bloodied and the, all the things that she was being accusing Johnny of having done to her and having to relive these moments, you're not going, yes, this happened. Uh, you know, you're not acting like that, you know, and, but that's how she was coming across. And so for, that's for one thing, but, and that's just sort of an overall thought, but, you know, going back now down to the details, Here's a person, you know, she, she's asked questions like, you didn't want to relive it, but yet she writes this massive op-ed piece in the Washington Post. And then she frames the article, hangs it in her house. This is not a person who doesn't seem to, uh, you know, I don't want to relive it. She certainly doesn't seem to be afraid. Okay, so she's asked about the bruises on her face, okay? And there was this one uh, line of questioning that I thought was very, very interesting where she's asked about the bruises on her face and that she had been, uh, she accused him of hitting her in the face multiple, multiple times. And then 
Camille does a very good job of, of setting up this questioning where she gets her to admit that he has worn many, that he wore many rings on his fingers often and that she is, and she says, yes, I've always known him to wear many rings on his fingers often. He always has, always has. And she agrees to that. And yet then she shows this picture that she took of her icing her face. And yet there's not one single bruise or cut or open mark on her face, not one. And yet, you know, the, all the, the um, you know, uh, that he had hit her multiple times on the face and yet not one single bruise or mark on the face. So again, perfect, exposes her as a liar. Okay, so that, that was a great line of questioning by Camille. Totally crushed, totally exposes her as a liar. No, another one was where he, she's asked about this broken nose situation where she says that she has this broken, bloodied nose and that he, because he head butted her and she said that she spent the entire night icing it and trying to figure out how she was going to cover it up because she had to go on the James Corden show the next day. And she, she put this super heavy makeup on and how she was going to gamble and pull it off to, to show up the next day. And she had this whole team of people helping her, her makeup team. And you know, she, she referred to it as lesions on her head. Lesions was the word I think she used. Um, and, and she even, you know, talked about the stinging of the makeup. And, you know, she, you know, she used these words. She had to use this heavy makeup, heavier than usual, because, you know, she, she said that she had to carry this makeup with her every day because of her multiple beatings all the time. And by the way, of course, you know, I talked about last time how she had the makeup that she referred to that she carried with her all the time that the company said, they didn't even make that makeup during that period of time. But you know, I guess she came back and said, Oh, it wasn't that makeup. It was some other version of that makeup, but whatever. So they, they show her on the James Corden show the next day and her nose isn't even swollen. I mean, if, you're, if your nose is gonna be broken, it's at least going to be somewhat swollen. It's gonna be, I mean, makeup can only do so much. Your lips are, are going to at least look swollen. Um, and she doesn't even look, you know, anything like there's anything going on. Um, and so, you know, it, it really, again, uh, exposes her. And, and again, you know, this is one of those things that I say all the time about narcissists. And this is one of the things that I want to pull out that, you know, some of the other people who are potentially breaking down her testimony are probably not going to bring out. And that is that narcissists lie all the time and they lie about things that are readily verifiable. And that's the thing that is, I think, uh, you know, um, actually uh, mind blowing. And they get away with it so often that they, they, they gamble to the point that it becomes their undoing because they get away with it so much that they think that they're untouchable sometimes. And it ends up becoming their undoing. And I believe that that's what's going to end up happening here. Now, do I think that Johnny Depp is going to ultimately end up winning his case, which is the whole point of all of this spectacle? I don't, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I don't know that he's going to be able to prove damages enough to be able to prove that he that that op-ed piece actually led to him losing that Pirates of the Caribbean movie and that Disney contract. 
which is honestly the whole point of this thing. People have lost sight of that. Uh, you know, I don't know that either of them are going to win either of their cases, which is the whole point of this whole spectacle. But will she end up being exposed as the liar that she is? I do believe that she will. So, so that's um, that. And, and, and this is honestly, it becomes an insult to people who really are a victim of domestic abuse. I mean, who really have endured serious, you know, who, who actually have had to try to put makeup on, who really have had to try to cover up bruises. I mean, that that's the really, really sad part. And, and you know, I do want to, to make sure that we do put the domestic abuse hotline below this video so that those of you out there who are watching who actually are victims of, of domestic abuse, get the help that you need. And, and by the way, we do have a partnership with BetterHelp. So for those of you who are out there who need support, who are suffering and please don't suffer, you know, if you need therapy, you want online therapy, we are sponsored and, and um, you know, we do receive support from BetterHelp, we are sponsored by BetterHelp, but we only partner with people who we trust. Um, it doesn't affect any cost to you, but we only partner with people that we trust and please get the help that you need, okay? So now asked um, about the donations. Let's go into this whole line of questioning around the donations. Um, and by the way, if you think this whole thing is so sick, put so sick in the comments. And, you know, I want to know what you guys are thinking about this whole thing around um, Amber Heard, too. You know, I, I would love to hear your comments. All right. So let's get into her whole thing about the donations. Um, you know, she was asked about whether or not she actually donated the money because she had gone on these interviews and she, uh, you know, said that she donated the entire 7 million, that she didn't want it. It wasn't about the money. And then when asked about it, she never donated the money. She actually got the money. And the reason why she said she didn't donate the money was because she didn't want him to be able to get the tax write-off that she wanted to be able to get the tax write-off, that she didn't want him to have that. So that she's intending to fulfill her obligation, but she hasn't actually done that yet. She still has the money. Uh, so, you know, Camille said, you know, you, you wanted it to seem believable. You wanted to be the noble victim, but you know, she so she, she goes and tries to blame it on Johnny somehow that she doesn't hasn't donated the money that somehow it's his fault that she hasn't donated that money yet. Again, so narcissistic, so narcissistic that somehow, even though she's gone out and told everybody that it wasn't about the money, that she, you know, has donated this money to ACLU and the Children's Hospital, and that she wanted nothing, and that somehow that's his fault, and that it's because she didn't want him to have the tax break, that that it's it's his problem, his responsibility, and that's why she hasn't done that, done it yet. Okay, so you know that's uh, you know those are some of the major highlights of her narcissistic cross examination. I mean, there are a lot of others, but you know, I I really wanted to point out how she really ended up coming across as quite the narcissist in her cross-examination yesterday. It will continue today. 
And, um, and then there will be some redirect by her attorney where her attorney will try to rehabilitate her and try to salvage her and make her look better. We'll see how that goes. We'd love to know what you all think. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do that now. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you haven't um, joined my free private Facebook group, do that now. Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. And if you um, want to grab my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet, make sure you do that. Winmynegotiation.com. And remember that narcissists do not win unless you give in. Today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. You want to make sure that you always remember that. And I will definitely see all of you guys in the next video.